Hey guys, it's been a while and I'm finally back with another exciting tutorial. So today we're going to do these procedural rocks or procedural cliff elements. And this technique is so useful. You can use it in so many different instances. So if you want to learn how to make a rock with some grass on it, then follow along because this is going to be a fun one. So here in cinema, we are going to make a nice looking cliff. And first of all, we're going to start by making a cloner. And then we're going to make a cube. And I'm just going to make a cube that's a little elongated. And I'm going to duplicate the cube and make a cube that's a bit squished. Once you have these cubes, we can put them inside of our cloner. Then we can make a random. And we can put that inside of our effector stack in our cloner. And we can go into our random and set the position parameters to a little bit more, like like this, as you can see. Um, and I'm also going to turn on some rotation. And I'm just going to turn a little bit of rotation on, maybe a lot here in the edge rotation, like this, and also a little bit of this. Okay. And inside of our cloner, I'm actually going to go and set the count to two in the height. So we get a lot more height data to work with. And then I'm just going to go into my random and I'm just going to find a nice seat. And let me just look for it. Hmm. This one could be good. So I'm just going to scale down in the strength. Yeah, I think this one is looking real nice. So this is going to be the base of our cliff. And now we need to organize some stuff here. So first of all, I'm going to make a null. And I'm going to put all of the things inside of the null. Then I'm going to call it base. And then I'm going to make a displacer. And this displacer I'll just put inside of my base. I'll go to my shading tab and we'll go and select a noise. And in this noise, I'm just going to pull up the global scale a bit like this. I'm going to go back into the object tab right here. And then I'm going to pull up the height. So you can see now we are distorting all of our cubes. And this just helps to make it a little bit more organic. So now I'm going to go and make a bevel. I'm going to put it inside of my base again, and I'm going to put it underneath my displacer. And then I'm just going to go pull up the offset. And I'm also going to set the offset mode to radial, and this just to give it some chamfers and bevels, so it looks a little bit more like rocks. Now we're going to go and we are going to make a connect. And our connect object, we're going to pull in here. And we're going to select everything, pull it inside of our connect object. And then I'm just going to turn off the weld function because we don't need that. And it's a bit annoying. So I actually think I need to pull this a little bit more down the strength of my random because this rock is really floaty. Or maybe I need to find a new seed. And we can easily do that at the end. So yeah, let's go and minimize our connect here. And let's go select it and make a volume builder. Let's put our connect inside of our volume builder. And let's go and set the volume size to 6. And then we can go down here and select a SDF, close and open. And I'm just going to pull up the offset centimeter amount to 25. I think that should be good. So now we're just connecting all of our rocks and this will make it so much more dynamic. All right. So what we're going to do now is make a shader field. 
I'm going to put that underneath my volume builder and I'm going to go inside and select my shader field. Then I'm going to go to the creation space and I'm going to select objects below. And this is so it selects all of these objects. So I'm going to go into my shader field here and we're going to choose a noise. And for this noise, let it just calculate a bit. Yeah, you can see what it does. It just puts noise on everything. So for this noise, we're going to set the global scale to 500. And let's just see what that does. It looks like this, righty? And I'm just going to set the relative scale in the y-axis here to 500 as well. So we get these stretchy looking lines. So now we can minimize our volume builder and we can put it inside of a volume measure. And we're still working inside of our base null here. And one important thing that you need to do here in the volume measure is you need to pull up the adaptive scale to 100%. And if I go into lines mode, you can see what it actually does. It just creates these big islands of polygons and these small clusters as well. And this is the key part to this technique. So I'm just going to go back to quick shading here and let's go and make another bevel already. So we can put this bevel inside of our base null and we can go and select our component mode, which is polygons. So we want to bevel our polygons right now. And right now it looks like this and it doesn't really look that great. So we're going to set it to proportional mode. And I'm also going to go down here to our polygon extrusion and I'm going to turn that down to something like 10, I think. That should be good. So right now, as you can see, we're getting these nice big islands of extrusion and we're also getting these really small rocks and pebbles popping out. And this is really a key look to making this cliff look more organic. What I want to do now is go to my offset value here and I'm going to turn it up to not 100, that's a bit much, but 45. So now these extrusions have become little pointy things, a little bit more rocky maybe, um, but we're going to make them round in another step. So don't worry about that. So for now, we're just going to close our base here and we're going to make another volume builder. So now we can take our base, put it inside of our volume builder, and we're going to set the voxel size to 3. Then I'll take a volume measure, put the volume builder inside, and now we have this GUI miss. All right. <laughs> so we need to make a displacer, and this displacer we can put as a second child of our volume measure, and we can call this rock. So inside of the displacer, we're going to go and we're going to make a noise. And I found that by using a displaced Voronoi, I got the best results. But just experiment with it and see what works for you. So I'm just going to set my octaves to 20. So we have a lot of resolution to go by. And I'm also going to set my global scale to 500, as we did before. And I'm also going to set my relative scale to like 300. So we still get these stretchy, stretchy lines. All right. So now you can see we are almost getting these cliff sides. But the last thing we need to do here is we need to go and give it some contrast. Kind of like this. So it just... I'm just going and moving the low clip and the high clip. So you can see some of these are not looking good anymore. They're a bit too bubbly, you might say. And I'll just turn my low clip down. So yeah, I'm just trying to get some more detail in this. And if you really wanted to, you could actually go to your volume builder and you can set your voxel size down. 
and you can see you get even more nice looking geometry. Um, but I'm just going to set it to free again. And now we have this really weird looking, but also kind of nice looking rock. And if you find that maybe looks a bit too cloned out, you can always go to your first volume builder here and turn up the close and open offset. So if I turn it to 55 now, you can see so much more are connected and I can even turn it to 200. And we're, I think we're just going to get like a blob now, maybe. Yeah. So everything is just connected now and we have this big, big mountain. So I would say around 100 for really nice mountain feel or as I did, you could go lower and you can have these small, small crevices like this one. So I actually already have a rock texture here and I'm just going to put it on here. Let's just see what happens. All right. So in this texture, I have a lot of bump and I also have a lot of displacement. So it just helps to get that extra little bit of fine detail. One last step we need to do is we need to add some foliage. And there's a quick and easy way to do that. First of all, we need to make a cloner and I'm just going to call it grass. And I'm just going to go over here and find this one. And I think I'm going to search for some grass. Like grass too. That's a good one. Let me just go in here and select these and delete this. And we can just connect this one. Okay, so now we have this bush and we have some grass. So inside of our grass cloner, we can go and first of all, set it to multi instance. Then I'm going to go and set it to object and I'm going to pull in my rock. So we are scattering things onto this rock here. And I'm just going to make the scatter count a bit higher. Let's make it 10,000. Alrighty. And right now I see that our small grass needs to be scaled up. So I'm just going to scale that up like this. And I'm just going to scale down my bush. So it kind of acts like this must kind of type and yeah maybe i'll scale down the grass again scale down to the mouse that should be fine and i'm just gonna make a random effector and put it on this cloner and i'm just gonna go in here and turn on some random rotation like this All right and i'm also gonna turn on some random scale i'm just gonna set a uniform scale of one or maybe 0.5 I think that should be better all right but you might be thinking this doesn't look that great grass doesn't grow on the roof and you are so right so we need to mask it in some way and for that we need to go down here to a shader field so in our shader field if I just pull it up here, we can go to the effects and then we can go down to terrain mask. And this terrain mask is going to determine where the grass are going to grow on our cliff. So let's turn off the altitude masking right now. We don't need that. And let's take the soften down to two and let's use global coordinates. All right, let me just pull it down again. So right now we need a plane effector and this plane effector, I'm just going to turn off all position and I'm only going to turn on this visibility. So we're only controlling the visibility with this one. Just going to call it delete. And let's go into the fields tab. Let's pull in our shader field and let's also go into our cloner and let's pull in our delete. So as you can see, we have deleted most of the foliage on the roof and 
we have also deleted most of the foliage on the side. Okay, so now I just need to go into my clone again and let's pull the count up to 100,000 and let's just see what happened. So let's go into our terrain mask again and let's set the max slope to 55. Or maybe let's set it to 40. Maybe 40 is better. We could also just, yeah, try to play around with this number. So right now it's set to 25. And I actually find that's a bit better for this scene right here. So the last thing we need to do, and a really important step, is actually to have the grass facing upwards. So the way we do that is we go into our cloner, inside of our assets here and I'm just gonna turn it 90 degrees like this and I'm also gonna do the same for the grass so now it's looking so much better and it's actually looking like a cliff side and the great thing about this technique is that you can go inside of the rock here and you can go down and if you select this random down here and you go into the effector tab you can actually go and press the seed number and it should just calculate a bit and then you'll get a totally different cliff. And this is the magic of this procedural cliff. So you can generate as many cliffs as you want. And it's really quick to find a cliff that matches your scene. And I can actually see that this one is really, really nice. And this is really a must when you're cloning out this system and you want to change the look of your cliff so it doesn't match the first one. Okay, so that was really a nice technique to make these procedural rocks. And I'm personally gonna use it for so many different projects where I need a close-up rock that needs to be really detailed or I need a cliffside in the background. If you like my content and you want to see more, then please go and subscribe down below. You can also write a comment if you need any help with anything. I just want to say good job, Lucas. And you can also write to me on Instagram. You can also go and follow me on Instagram if you want some sneak peeks on the next tutorial. And I think that was it for all the stuff I needed to plug. So I'm just going to wish you a very nice rest of your day. Go out, make some awesome motion design. And I'm going to see you here on the channel next time for some more motion design goodness. Goodbye.